Hello everybody, I'm Arden. Welcome to another episode of Minecraft Enigmatica 2 Expert. Today we're going to take a step back away from advanced rocketry because for the past two episodes I've been complaining non-stop about not having applied energistics auto crafting set up. So, I guess we should just jump right into that. And the very first step of this is to upgrade our crafting terminal. And unfortunately this is something that doesn't have a wireless version. So we just have to do this to our main one right here. And what we need to do is turn it into the ME pattern terminal, which is pretty simple. You just combine it with a processor. And there we go. Now that we have this, you'll notice that there is a new tab down here that shows the pattern terminal. And it has two toggles, the crafting pattern and the processing pattern. We'll get to what the processing pattern is for in a little bit. But the crafting pattern, it lets you store automatic crafting patterns, sort of like the workbenches I have upstairs. But to use these, you need to have blank patterns loaded in. Once we have these made, you can just load them in like that. And then you can pick any recipe you want. You can load it even from GAI and say, let's automate making these blank patterns. And it creates a new pattern like this. And then you hit the button to encode it. And it comes down here. Let's also, while we're at it, let's also make the quartz class. When setting these, you want it to explicitly be the materials you, you want it to use in the recipe every single time. To alter or change a recipe, you can just put it back right here and you can just switch the materials at will. So I can change this from a pure surface crystal, which I don't actually want it to be, to a normal one just by doing that. And then you just re-encode it. So that brings us to the next step. What do we actually do with this? Well, we hook our system up to a molecular assembler with an ME interface to uh, attach to it. The ME interface is relatively simple to make. As you can see, it's just glass iron and these cores that we've made before. And the molecular assembler is not much harder except it requires a tier three crafter, which is just an upgraded version of the tier one and tier two that we have made previously as well. Okay, and once you have these made, you can just plug them directly into your ME controller with any cable like this. The cable has to go into the ME interface. The ME interface has to be next to the molecular assembler. The whole purpose of the ME interface is you can right click into it and you can store up to nine patterns in it. So we can put the quartz class in here and the blank pattern. And once you've done that, it will be able to use any molecular assembler next to it to craft those patterns with. So you can actually build these up into big cubes with the multiple molecular assemblers surrounding them, as well as other ME interfaces touching them. So you, if you build up like a big rectangle that alternates them, you can get a, a, a fairly large amount of efficiency out of it that way. That said, we aren't done quite yet. We need to do one more thing with this before we can actually start this. And what we need to do is build the crafting CPU. And the crafting CPU is made up of these crafting storage blocks combined with crafting co-processing units. The storage blocks determine how large of jobs you can send through and the co-processor determines how many at once. So you can build up a big large cube of this as well for a bunch of storage as well as a bunch of co-processors to make them work in parallel. To make the crafting storage, you just have to use these crafting units that I've been getting out of loot boxes for a while now. I've got six of them as well as a storage component. There's a whole series of these from one to 64 that just increases in complexity as you build them up because this takes a 4K one, which requires three 1K ones and it stages up like that where it's three of the previous tier up to the top. Obviously, I'm gonna start with a low tier one, a 4K one just to get this started, but I'm ultimately gonna replace them with 64Ks at some point when I stop being lazy, you know, and get it done. That'll probably be one of the earlier things that I actually automate though. <laughs> The crafting coprocessor is the crafting unit just combined with an engineering processor, however. So that's a lot easier to make. And once you make them, you just connect them to your network and place them together in a rectangle. And you see that they link together and turn on. Now that we have this on, we can go into our crafting terminal and we can search for the things we just made. And you can see that we have blank pattern here with the word craft under it. And we can click this and we can select an amount to craft. And we'll just craft two for now, just so you can see how this works. Click next. And here's all of the materials it has available. It's set to automatic and we can hit start. And now we have one and two and it's all done. So that's the easy 
first basic step for auto crafting. We can build up from here. We can add more molecular assemblers. We can add more interfaces. We can add more CPUs or storage to speed all that up. There's also acceleration cards. We can add to the machines to speed up the crafting if it's going too slow, stuff like that. The next step, however, is to actually wire this up to our machines to do auto crafting because what I really need are things that can auto make plates, rods, and all of the other subcombines, as well as all the finished products. It'd be really nice to be able to you know, automate the machine structures for advanced rocketry as completely as insane as that would be. But I'm gonna go through the additional extra step of putting it all in a compact machine because let's just keep the clutter out of this room and out of my base as a whole if we just wanted to automatically process stuff. All right, so using A2 with compact machines is not entirely straightforward because compact machines use a a newer type of item transport called compatibilities, which A2 predates and it was not updated to, at least in this version. You need to use an add-on called a capability adapter, and it's fairly simple to make. It just requires an ME interface and some Flux crystals. And what you do is you just slap this on the side of the compact machine you want your cabling to come in. In this case, we're gonna put it right here and then you add your cables as normal. You will find some misinformation about this, saying that the, it can only support eight channel cables into the capability adapter into the Convict machine, and that's out of date. It's on a newer version of the mod that can support dense cables, so feel free to use those. Once you've got this connected, we need to go inside and put some tunnels in. You might notice that I have normal power coming to this. It's because it's easier to hook up RF or Forge Energy machines via normal power sources than it is to do it via the A2 energy system. I've also got a tunnel up over here because on the inside you also need another capability adapter. So we're going to slap that up there and then we're going to put a cable off of it. And the very first thing we're going to do after we put the cable on is put a wireless access point onto it, which then activates and tells us that we're connected to the network. And coming back into our wireless terminal, you can see that we can see our inventory, which means everything is working correctly inside our compact machine. The next step is to come back up to our pattern terminal. I could probably have moved this inside the compact machine, I wasn't thinking. And now we want to use the processing pattern selector to add what we want. In this case, I think we're gonna start doing plates. Let's, let's do lead plates. And we're gonna do it with a thermal expansion compactor. We'll encode that and put that down here. So I moved things around a little bit. I'm probably gonna move them around significantly and re-lay out how I do this later. But for now, this is how I've got it set up. You notice how I have the compactor set up so that only one side has inputs and outputs and they're all out the top. On top of this, we need to put an ME interface there. And inside the interface, let's add the lead plate as well as the copper and iron. And now if we go into the crafting terminal, we can now craft copper plates. So let's craft, I don't know, 100 of them and hit next and start the job. And coming into the card, you see it's filling up and processing. The ME interface can act as both an input and an output for most machines. This works really well for machines that can input and output from the same faces. It gets a bit more complicated if you have to route things around back into the ME interface to get it out or back into the system as a whole. For machines like this, this is all really, really easy to implement. And as you can see, I can put up to nine patterns in here. So we can actually throw out most of the plates. And then I can do things like add another compacting machine with the gear working die add-on and do gears as well. And add any other machines for any other subcombines that we want into this. It's all pretty easy, at least at this level. Here's the fun part though. Now that I've got the means to automate plates and the means to automate crafts, I can do things like add a hopper pattern into the molecular assembler. And I can hit craft on it. And let's make 10 of them. And because it knows how to make iron plates and it knows how to make the other pieces, we can just start. It doesn't know how to make the chest, but that's because I, I haven't put that in yet. But as you can see, it has started making the hoppers and processing plates directly through the compact machine. So that's useful, especially since I need hoppers for my next step. All right, so the next part of the project is to start automating the manufacture of chips for A2, so I can make A2 parts faster. But there's a few problems with this setup. So I'm using a manufactory to make silicon ingots and the advanced inscriber to process them into silicon wafers. If we go into the crafting terminal, we can see that I can make both the printed silicon and the silicon ingot. So, but if we craft this and say, let's make like four or five, hit next, you see that it's missing the inscriber silicon press. 
And if we go in here, well, the press is in there. The problem is because the press isn't consumed, however, we don't actually want it as part of the recipe. What you instead want to do is go back to the pattern terminal, put it back in here, and remove that, and then re-encode it. Once we have it back in place, come back in here, restart this job, and hit start. Except you'll notice that this job will never finish because we'll kind of come into the manufactory and see that the silicon ingots are sitting right here. And this is because nuclear craft machines, like a whole lot of other machines that aren't thermal foundation boxes, do not auto eject their items. So even if we set the correct sides, they're not gonna go out. What we need to do is connect some item ducts to the ME interface and put a servo on it and set it to a whitelist to put the ingots in and set the correct face to output. All of a sudden you see the advanced describer start up and starts processing. That said, this also has the same problem, which is weird for an A2 add-on, you would think this would auto eject back into an A2 system, but the exact same problem. And once we've done that, they now will auto eject back into our system. And if we come back in here, you'll see that they have printed. I took some of them out there in my inventory to create the filter within the first place. So the only thing left to do here is create three more of those for the basic chips and one more for general chip processing. And then I'll have the ability to make all of those just by clicking a button. Pretty nifty. All right, I have my chip processing in place. The first four of these are for processing the subcomponent circuits, and the last one is for, for making the processors. All right, so there's one more thing you can do now that I have this all set up. I added one more ME interface to the end of the row here, and I connected it via a storage bus at the top. Now, why did I do this? If we come into it, you can see that I have two things going on here. I'm using the config interface up here, where I can put items into the top and it will tell it to store up to 64 of the items in down here, or in this case, 10 here. It will try to pull it out of our available inventories or failing that, I put a crafting card in here and it will attempt to craft them. And as you can see, it's now creating silicon and crafting the silicon circuit right now. If we come back into here, you can see that it is now storing them into here. It will store up to 64 of them total as it makes them. If I dump all of my spares back into my inventory here, you can see that it shunted them over to here. And this is because I've cranked up the priority to be higher than my normal storage because I wanted to store these here. Now, the reason there's a storage bus on here is because this is now holding inventory that can be used by other machines. So now, if we go in and we request our engineering processors, and let's make like 10 of them and hit next and start the job, you'll see that the advanced inscriber immediately kicks off because it pulled the inventory straight out of our ME interface, which is now trying to backfill from the other storages or failing that will then start creating them due to the crafting card in it to backfill it all. So we don't have to wait on the final product. This is good for things like uh, making plates and rods as well, or any other subcombined, just so you can have a stash of them ready to go for final materials. One of the more useful aspects. You can also, in theory, use this to create a cache of items that you always want to have lying around in your system, but it's useful for more than just kicking off crafting jobs by itself. So the main things I have to do now is add more storage from a crafting system, add some more coprocessors so that I can do more jobs, and then add some more ad capability adapters to the other faces of this compact machine because I can only put 32 channels in on a side, which means I'm limited to the number of faces on the cube, unfortunately. But this will let us get a fairly large amount of automation in each given one of these compact machines. And yes, I know the dense cables I'm using inside currently I can replace with normal, normal smart cables to save on the dense cables, and I'm going to at some point. I just didn't have them on hand while I was making this. Anyhow, as always, I'm Ard. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.